Hi, I'm Louise Field, founder of the Door Your Pelvic Floor, and I am joined today for part two of my lovely conversation with Siobhan from Posture Fitting. And um, we, we discussed so much interesting stuff last time, but we've got more to ask. And, and our question today is more about the exercise and, and sports bras. And so I'm really just going to hand it over to you, Siobhan. <laughs> Where, do we Where do we begin? Yeah, well, it is, a, it is a bit of a minefield, to be honest. Um, so we talked last week about the importance of ideal fit and optimal fit. And one of the big, the biggest times when we need to be in our optimal fit is when we're exercising, because we know how much the breasts move during exercise. We've got research showing the literally number of centimeters in terms of vertical movement that we will have when we're walking and more all the more so when we're running. The higher impact obviously is gonna create more uh, movement, but actually we move in a three dimensional, we move in a figure of eight um, plane at the breasts. So we need support more than just in the vertical plane. We also need it for uh, the sideways plane and for forwards and backwards. So it's getting a decent sports bra comes down also to getting something that has been made with that knowledge in mind. So back in the days, and let's see how quickly I can get my top off. Back in the old days, whoo, now, back in the old days, Sports bras, well, first off, when they came out, it was two jock straps, by the way, and um, that was made by somebody. But it basically was, I think what you kind of showed me last week, which is just, this is just material. You know, that's just literally material. It's been cut into that shape there. But literally, it's just material. There is nothing there. I can pull that out. And if I run, jog, you can see probably. That I'm bouncing up and down. Yeah, the you know, <laughs> up and down. So I'm going to bruise myself with that. Actually, I ran up the stairs earlier to get something, and and I really, really felt that movement as I was going up and down the stairs. So the concept of getting good quality for the support is really important. But then the other thing that's really important is getting the optimal fit. So I have here a variety of different sports bras that I have worn over the years. So this was one that incorporated a heart rate monitor and it's very much the same as what I'm wearing here, but maybe slightly, very slightly thicker with it. No, nah, no, nah, there isn't even really elastic in that. Um, that's uh, one that just had a bit of push up padding which you know, most of us, to be honest, don't need. And I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that was at all, but that's a sports brand, an American sports brand. And then these ones here, which are all very gray looking. Oh yeah. That okay. I have worn um, back. Now this, I got these after I had been optimally fitted. So these ones, so for example, this one here, um, this is a non-wired, and this would be what we would consider to be like, um, almost like a boob tube. I'm gonna put it on to show you. Um, but sports bras, when they first came out, tended to be compression and the idea being just jam it in onto your chest and then that's gonna stop it moving, okay? I remember wearing them. Um, I'm wondering, I may even have some like that now, to be honest. Um, okay. So yes, it would be literally, um, while you're changing, I'll keep talking, of yeah. you're putting it over your head, you put your arms through, there's not any stitching, it would just be a squeeze in, and because they were squeezed together, that was the idea of, um, I remember the brand, so I best not say them out loud, and it was, it was the fact that they just bunched together, and yes. yeah, um, but like you say, is that actually stopping? The downward and the side to side, not necessarily. Well, the thing is, because we have those three planes of movement, sorry, I didn't manage to tie this properly. Because we have the three planes of movement, we want to try and control it in the three planes. And when you wear something like the, those bras were, are called minimizers. Yeah. And when you wear a minimizer, then what you're getting is compression this way, but you're not getting anything to control the sideways or the up and down. So um, what has since happened since those ones, there we go, I've got it now, um, is 
is something called encapsulation. And encapsulation is basically like the day wear bra that I showed the other day where we have a, a, a wire that encapsulates. Now you can also have that in a non-wired version. Um, so in a non-wired encapsulation, what you've got is, no, I can't see that very well because it's black, but there's a mold there. You can see it sideways. Yeah, you can see it there because of the yeah. light. So there's a mold there. And therefore, even though there's no wire, the breast will sit in that mold. So it is encapsulated. And, and by encapsulated, it's kind of, again, like whoever it was that said about the whole lift and separate, encapsulating basically means separating them, yeah? So this, to go back to this one now, this, I would have, this would be a 32 band around the time when I was, I had discovered that I needed to not be wearing 36. So, and this is a, a reputable um, brand, but I have washed it a lot now, to be fair, like, cause I wore it a lot. But again, if you look and you see, I'm yeah. still getting quite a lot of movement there. Yeah. And you can see it here. Now it's, it's better than the other thing I had on, yeah. but there's definitely still some movement happening. Yeah. And I suppose you kind of, you'll appreciate more how much less movement there can be when I put on the one that is going to be the best of all the options. Okay. So I'm just going to pop off the yeah, screen. No problem. The thing is, it's Siobhan, is that we'll probably get used to what we're wearing, don't we? And we don't even notice it in the end. Um, because yeah. if I had a bra that was fitting me properly for when I was exercising, then if I put on one of the other ones, I'll soon go, whoa, this, yes. is, this is feeling wrong. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And the other thing that's very common with women is that women will wear two or three sports bras. Yeah, so they'll I've put, done that. Yeah. I've done that. yeah. <laughs> They'll put one on and they'll realize with their one on that they don't have enough support. Yeah. So then what they'll do is they'll put another one on top of it. And yes, that's going to give them a little bit more, but then you're still compressing. And compression and, you know, can't be good for you. No, exactly. That, that level of compression, you know, over longer periods of time as well, is probably not something yeah. that we'd be wanting to um, promote, to be honest. I remember so, the two bras. I haven't done that for years now, but um, it used to be sometimes a normal bra and then um, my um, the, um, the the first bra that you're talking about. So it could be my normal bra, then that very first bra you use, the minimizer. Yeah. Um, and um, But I haven't done that for a few years now. I have been buying um, what I would consider better bras, um, but then I've still not had a fit from you yet so actually it could be that i've actually got a very good i'd say it's a very substantial one on today it's only by chance because i'll be honest i've got a lot of crappy ones in my drawer as well and it's just like oh i'm not jumping around too much today oh i am jumping a bit more today um so i'm just a little bit flighty and i know that um, i need to be less flighty if i want these to stay uppy <laughs> But you know, you know, you, again, you know, you, you've said a couple of things there, which indicates that you think about it. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't think about it at all. So you've even just said, I'm going to be jumping around today. I'll put that one on. I'm not going to be jumping around today. I'll put that one on. So that means that you're thinking about your activity level and you're thinking about what support you need. Unfortunately, because most women don't appreciate that we need to be supported and they've never felt what it is to be supported then they don't necessarily realize that how important that is so very often you will have people who will wear a day wear bra when they're doing sports because they don't know that a sports bra can give them that bit more support the statistics on the number of women wearing sports bras is shocking 10 percent of school girls teenage school girls in the survey that the university of Portsmouth did only 10 percent of them wore a sports bra teenagers and of the 10%, none of them knew whether it was the right fit. So and actually, teenagers, I don't know, this might be absolute, like, it's just my observation. Girls younger seem to be getting bigger. I, I don't know. They, they, they just seems to be a lot more full of breasted women out there. Um, and I think that's, a, that's probably a combination of we're all seeing more. You know how... I think I said this the other day, you buy a white car and then you keep seeing white cars on the road. I think with social media now and everything, we're seeing a lot more images of girls and women. Um, but I think also, as there is a little bit more awareness of fit, you're going to probably start to see people looking, not necessarily larger breasted, 
but perhaps you're going to see um, the, them in a better position. The and shape. so therefore, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you see the shape true. and kind of notice that. And and if you look at the, you know, kind of whatever records have been kept, you could find something now that says the average bra size 20 years ago, 50 years ago was X, and now the average bra size is Y. But I I find those very unreliable because the average bra size is what the average person is buying. Yeah. It's not necessarily the right one. It's not their optimal fit. It's what the stores are stocking. So they're not necessarily getting a, a true reflection of what the average or the median size actually is. But what we can what we can definitely say with 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 absolute absolute um, uh, security is that the average woman has a bigger cup than she thinks she does. Yeah. Because again, women have been in the wrong band, therefore they've been in the wrong cup. Most women are a bigger cup size than they think they are. And that comes back again then to, you know, back when I thought my double D was gonna have me on page three of the sun. And I now realize the double D is, and it's all, you know, the letters are irrelevant at the end of the day, it's about the support. But it, that's not very significantly large at all. And that is probably, you know, I think there's a there's a, a bit of an onus on those of us in education to try and take away, you know, we talk about stigma in pelvic health. And this is a different type of stigma, but there are women who will be nervous about wearing bras that have a big cup size because they just think, oh my God, I couldn't possibly be that size. Yeah. Um, and so, going up the scale, yes, if you're going yeah. beyond your double days, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, when I fit people now, I don't tell them what the size is that I'm putting on them until after they have felt the support. And I had that happen, and I know she won't mind, mind me saying it, a very good friend of mine who's a physio who was large-breasted, and she had, over the years, she had had to find herself decent support. And I fitted her, and she actually refused because I told her what I was putting her in. And she was like, no, there is no way you're putting that on me. And because she was a friend, I just, you know, told her to get over herself and we put it on and she was totally and utterly overawed and she she you know she has said this and is happy to go to to say it to anybody who will listen that she couldn't believe the difference and now she realizes the letter is irrelevant but there is a little bit of a you know a kind of a stigma to it in terms of of um body image and so on so anyway let me let oh, me do a little bit of a jog so. yeah while well, you keep jogging yeah i could have been doing all that and talking bra, no. talking on 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 um, video all day long always in yeah. a bra <laughs> always jumping up and down and that is like you say right okay so how does so that feel a much different level of support there i mean there's still going to be some movement you can't get none i mean the testing that they've done basically from people wearing no bra to wearing a day bra to wearing a sports bra testing has decreased the bounce or sorry within the testing the um sports bras have decreased the bounce of um the subjects tested up to up to 80 percent 74 to 83 percent is what's been um recorded and horsemith have just done a, a big study um recently and uh, and they got 74 percent on that one this particular um was tested in a different uh, facility and this is 83% less bound. So what I've just done there is I've just tied this racer back. Yeah. And this is another really important feature. And now when I do that, so again, that's just giving me that little bit more support again. So, I mean, you can see a little bit of movement happening here, but you can't, you know, there, there will not be no movement. And when I do this, the bra stays. That's a really important thing. Okay. So when a, when a band is too big, you do this yeah. and the bra goes up. So basically when the bra moves with the person, then it's the wrong size. It's it's too big. And if it's too big, it's not going to give you support. Okay. So if you're having a sports bra, and I think I know what your answer will be to this, but I'm going to just throw it out there anyway, is um that you should, um if, if you are happy to get rid of your sports bra at the end of the day or at the end of the session, I take it it's not the best fit for you. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes people will err on the side of putting something on that's too tight because they know they need the support, particularly the larger breasted women. So sometimes you do get people who are wearing things that, um, you know, are too small. But again, they're still there. You know, they may not be getting the right support because it might be 
too big and they're not getting enough support or they may be wearing something that's too tight and too small and then they're getting um you know kind of poking in places that they shouldn't do particularly if there's a wire in it and um, so again it comes back to it's really important to be to be fitted correctly and and to understand and that's the thing for me um, you know, without sounding like like what I'm doing is is the answer to everything. Um, I mean, it is obviously, but you know, um, what I want is for every woman in the world to be able to fit herself. You know, you, every woman should know what the criteria are, what it is that you look for, and then you can go into a shop and you can fit yourself. And okay. it's not really that difficult. No. Okay. So I'm going to then also throw in that question because we're going to draw this towards the end because we like to keep our video short and sweet. Um, yeah is that if I wanted a posture fit in then, how much does that cost? Because obviously then it's like, right, that sounds really great. What is the, I don't, because I've got no idea. What, what is the cost? Is there a okay. cost? So, so the, basically the cost of a posture fitting reflects the cost of a physio appointment because at the end of the day, it is a physiotherapy consultation. It is looking at the person's um, posture. It's looking at the person's breast support. It's looking at the person's spinal support. So it's a physiotherapy assessment and it takes an hour. So, um, and then there is a follow-up appointment afterwards, which generally, um, a little bit different now in the virtual world. So it's taking a little bit it's taking a little bit of reorganization in the virtual world. Um, but but in generally it's 150 euro or 135 pounds um, for the two appointments. Okay. Um, and that that's kind of that's the starting point, yeah, quite honestly. I mean, if it if it sometimes we have to go a little bit backwards and forwards with the bras because at the moment they're having to be sent out to people to try on at home. Um, I, I, unless somebody is close to one of my posture fitting physio partners who can do face to face and it is it is much easier face to face, but it can be done virtually um, if that's the only option for people. And in all honesty, though, Siobhan, we need it to be virtual as well, because um, one of the posture fitting physios may not be in my local town. So yeah. actually, it's, it's, we do need to be able to have it as a virtual thing as well. And then yeah. um, the other thing is, so talking from somebody in the street who's like, OK, I'm quite keen about this, is um, how much are, are the bras on average? An average ballpark. Oh, good question. Um, between sterling and euro, I can sometimes get a little bit confused about them. But um, I, I think you're probably in the ballpark of between thirty-five and fifty. Okay. Um, well, in general. Fair, very fair price. That's, that's yeah, it's not out of the. No, it's it's not. It, it's not overly excessive for the quality of the product, and I think that's the thing. We can all go into the you know department stores where you can get stuff um and i'm not going to go with them or anything but certainly like anything you pay peanuts you get monkeys you can get something that is much much cheaper but it won't last you as long and what i always say to people with their bras is if you look after your bra it's an investment it will last you longer if you don't look after it it's not going to last you as long so yeah and this isn't a sell employ anybody that's listening it is my pure interest question of like how much is it then love um so yeah thank you for that um because yeah i mean like in all honesty the sports bras i buy are at least 35 quid plus so um yeah that's normal kind of price so that's good um um, well, I'm going to let you get going, Siobhan, because um, I know you've got appointments and um, I'm going to let you get on with your day. Um, but um, I'm sure that um, any questions, please put them in the comments and um, we will get back to you. Um, and um, yeah, look forward to another time, I'm sure, Siobhan. <laughs> Thank I'm you. And look forward to attending your CPD training day as well. That's going to be good. Show. Yeah. Louise, just the one last thing that I would like to say that I maybe didn't mention earlier is that there are a lot of women who will not exercise because of their breasts. And uh -huh. just to say, you know, there, there, there is hope in the sense that most women can get adequate support to allow them to exercise. And then we can get rid of that catch 22 where women don't want to exercise because they haven't got enough breast support, they if they haven't got enough exercise, then that's not good for their health. They may then increase weight because they've increased weight, they've got increased breast size. If they've got increased breast size, it's harder to find a decent sports bra and so on. And it is a big catch-22. And we can, we absolutely can break that cycle. So and then you, you saying that now is making me think of actually when, when women are 
the typical phrase being top heavy get backache i guess that actually the bra is fitting better there's less there's less chance of backache isn't there totally right absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. For that don't they right yeah. okay yeah cool any additional information that you think that we haven't covered please bung them in the comments siobhan because i'm sure. really handy um but um, i just appreciate your time thank you so much thank you for having me <laughs> and, and you didn't take your top off I didn't know. <laughs> I don't mind ever taking my top off. I've got quite a good bra. But see, look, you see this baggy there, though? There's this uh, yeah. quite a good bra. You won't like that bit. Um, and it's got a bit of space there, but it's got two bits in place. Now, I would say this, okay. is, but this is my firmest bra. So okay. actually, if we look at the bagginess there, that isn't very good, is it? Um, and the bagginess there. Um, and I have done a jump up and down test. <laughs> <laughs> but yes it's got the two bits but there's no there's no encapsulating going on no no it's a minimizer with a catcher on catcher in underneath the, the the fact that there's a second bit of material is is quite helpful because you're getting a little bit more support from that um, and it, you know, I, I think it, in terms of your positioning, it doesn't doesn't look too bad. I've seen worse, but there is room for improvement. Shall we say it that way? That's Put my it that best way. one. That's my best one. Okay. We can improve on your best, Louise. We can improve. <laughs> Thank you. Alrighty. <laughs> Take care. Go bye bye. Bye bye. Done. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, gorgeous.